Hi there, and welcome to another tech song video. We're going to follow up on what we were talking about uh, before in regards to the Pi Face device, which you can see I've got hooked up to my Raspberry Pi here. It is ready to go for a little bit of testing. And what we're going to do is just jump back over to the code here, and we're going to write a simple application that this time makes use of the buttons that you see here on the Pi Face. And we're going to use those buttons to light up the LEDs that you also see right here on the Pi Face. And we're going to write a very simple application to do that. It's probably going to be the simplest one that we've written so far in, in this uh, series of tutorials because we're not going to include any sort of a web-based front end and we're not going to include any sort of REST endpoints or uh, entry points through Tomcat or anything like that. We're really just going to be running a very, very simple, very lightweight, very small Java application on the Raspberry Pi itself. And we're going to use Maven, which is why you see this POM file up here on my screen. We're going to use Maven to control the dependencies and the build. So if you're looking at my POM, I'll cover this very briefly, and, and really what you can do is take a look at the source code yourself when you get an opportunity. But these dependencies um, include the Pi4j core, um, and then the, uh, the additional libraries that you need to uh, plug in some devices and work with the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi itself. And then I've got a couple of specific things uh, towards the bottom of the POM uh, regarding how to actually build out the jar file and to make sure that the dependencies are packaged in the actual jar itself uh, to make sure that everything runs the way that, that we want. Um, I've specified a class here called PyFace app, which we're going to write here in this tutorial. So there's nothing going on here, but we're going to go ahead and start using this to uh, get started here with our, our application. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and begin. The first thing that I want to do is I want to get a handle on the, um, the PyFace uh, library framework itself. So um, since we're going to be writing a Java application that's just a single class, I do need to make sure that I make this a static member of my class. It's going to be of the type PyFace. We'll call it PyFace just to keep it simple. And then, you know, you'll see my uh, IDE complaining every once in a while uh, by lighting something up in red. And what I do in my IDE is I simply hover over that and I click Alt-Enter. And that handles my import for me. So that way it understands that PyFace is actually going to come from this particular library up here. You'll see that a couple of times and you might see it start off red. You'll hear some clicking on my side and that's me just making sure that I'm importing that class. So the, I the IDE kind of helps me out in that regard. So what we'll do is we'll get a handle on the um, PyFace uh, device library. Uh, let me show you how I do that. I'm going to actually go ahead and try to, well, first let me set up my, my, my main method. The main method is the uh, entry point into the application. So you've probably seen this a billion times if you're doing any sort of Java studying. I'm basically setting up a public static void uh, method with the uh, array of string as my arguments. And then what I'll do in here is the first thing I want to do is actually initialize that PyFace member. Import that class. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've imported the class. But what I do recognize is that my IDE is complaining, and that's probably because this has the possibility to produce an input-output error uh, in the event that the actual PyFace device is not connected to the Raspberry Pi. So we do have to account for that. I'll go ahead and I'll hit Alt-Enter in my IDE, and it's going to make some suggestions. I'll go ahead and take its advice here, and I'll surround it with a try-catch. So in the event that it's not actually able to initialize it, I'll just go ahead and I'll set PyFace to null. However, just to be cautious, I'll make sure that I don't execute anything else unless I know that PyFace is not null. So I'll say if PyFace does not equal null, then we'll go ahead and continue by executing all the code in this particular block. So in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to implement a couple of events on two of the four buttons on the PyFace itself. I'll be implementing events, and what that means basically is I will be listening for events that take place on those switches, meaning if my finger presses down on one button, that is an event, and I'm going to listen for that and take action on it. When my finger stops pressing the button, I will listen for that and take action on that as well. We've got four buttons that we can use, 
and I'm just going to use the first two. And we'll implement some really simple events, like we'll turn the light on or off, or we'll blink it or stop blinking it. So we'll just go ahead and create event listeners on switch one and switch two, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to say pyface get switch, right? Very simple. But get switch takes an argument, and the argument that I want to uh, make sure I pass it is the specific switch itself, and it gives you a couple of uh, helpers to do that. So I'm going to make use of the pyface switch class that gives me some uh, static uh, references to uh, the switch IDs themselves. So I'll say pyface switch, and I'll look for switch one. And that, that's now a valid method. So I have now gotten a handle on the very first switch. But now that I've got that, I can invoke a method on it called add listener. So let me do that. So I'll say add listener. Add listener, of course, takes arguments as well. And those arguments are an actual implementation of a switch listener. So what we're gonna do in this code is we're going to implement that switch listener interface in line so that you can actually see the code. Uh, we're not gonna create a separate class for the switch listener. We'll actually implement it right here inside the argument for add listener. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so it doesn't know what this one is, so I'll go ahead and press Alt-Enter and that'll import it. And then it's still telling me that I got a problem but I suspect that it's just letting me know that there are some methods that I have to implement on this uh, particular interface. So I'll hit Alt-Enter again and let it give me some hints. And sure enough, it does say implement the methods. I'll go ahead and I'll let it do that for me. I'll say, sure, go ahead and implement those methods. What it's going to do is it's just going to go ahead and create the actual method signature for me, but the implementation is really still up to me. But this is all that we have to do to implement a switch listener is we just have to implement the onState change. OnState change is a method that takes a, uh, an argument of the event itself. And the event allows us to, to read certain things like what is the current state that we're looking at. So what we'll do here is we'll say if the switch event or if the new state of the button based on the switch event is actually set to on, do something, or if it's set to off, do something else. So let's go ahead and start that. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying if the very, if the very new state of, of the, the actual new switch state of switch one is set to on, then we're going to do our on event else we're going to do our off event. And that's really it. That's actually all that it takes to implement a switch listener for the buttons on the pie face. Now let me go ahead and I'm going to take this code, I'm going to copy it, because this is identical to what we need for switch number two. So I'll change this from switch one to switch two. Now, there's a large block here of repeatable code, so there's certainly ways to optimize this. But for the purposes of this particular exercise, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is. And what we'll do is up here, we'll implement our activities for switch one. And then down here, we'll implement our activities for switch two. For switch one, I'm going to make it very simple. I'm just going to make that button turn the light on and then turn off when I remove my finger from the button. For switch number two, I'm going to actually have the light blink while I'm pressing the button and then stop blinking when I take my finger off of the button. So let's go ahead and we'll start with switch one. Okay, so I'm going to use pie face again. I'm going to use the get LED method. We used this in our previous video, so this may seem familiar to you. Let's see, I do have a way to get a handle on LEDs. We're gonna call this LED zero. So that's the first LED. And let me make sure I do my import. And then what we're gonna do is we're very simply going to invoke the on method. That will turn it on. Let me copy this and I'll paste this here and change it so that in our else statement, we're just going to simply turn it off. So when I've got my finger on the button, the LED light turns on. 
when I do not have my finger on the button, it turns off. Super simple. Let's go down here to switch number two. And we'll do the same thing, only we will make sure that we are referencing LED number one. And instead of turning it on, we are going to blink it. And it's going to take an argument. We're going to give it um, 200 as a long. And then when we turn this, or when we take our finger off the button, what we'll do is we will say, let's go ahead and change that blink interval to zero. But we're also going to, just to make sure we're safe, we're going to make sure that we invoke the off method just because I'm not 100% sure if blinking of zero is actually going to continue to send a message to it. I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that I remove the blink, but that I also actually turn the light off as well. So I might be overly cautious here. It's really just kind of a lack of understanding of the API here. So I'm just kind of playing it safe. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to now save this code. We're going to get it up on GitHub. GitHub is going to allow us to check it out on the Raspberry Pi. And then once we check it out, we'll build and then run the software. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and log into the Raspberry Pi. I have my Raspberry Pi on my home network. That allows me to reference an internal IP address to log into it. If you're going to do the same, you do need to make sure that you know what your internal IP address is that's assigned to the Raspberry Pi. Of course, it does have to be turned on and on your network. So what we'll do, let me just take a look and see where I am. Let's see, I'm in Raspberry Pi. I do have my testing directory, which is what we're using for our tutorials. And what I will do is I'll just go ahead and I'll grab the checkout path of um, this project so that I can clone it onto my Raspberry Pi and build it. Okay, that checks the code out. And now what I wanna do is I just wanna navigate into that directory and we'll take a look and make sure that everything is there. It appears to be there. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll build this by invoking Maven package and letting that run for a bit. It'll download all of the dependencies that are necessary for this and make sure to get everything in place to allow you to build this project and uh, ultimately run it. So let's take, let's take a little bit of time to do that. It'll take me a few minutes and then we'll uh, fast forward and get started by running this application. Okay, and now with that application uh, completely built, we should be able to run it. And the way to run it is to, of course, make sure that you're invoking this command as root. And what we'll do is we'll just say java jar, I'm sorry, dash jar, and we will uh, reference the target destination of where the actual jar lives. It is called pyface buttons dash 1.0 dash snapshot dash jar, I'm sorry, dot jar. And then when you actually hit enter to start this application, unlike our previous exercises, it's not going to tell you much. It's really just going to kind of hang out, but it is running. We just don't have an output log like we usually do with a lot of the Spring Boot applications that I've been writing. So it really just kind of sits there. But in fact, it should be working. But to make sure, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, Raspberry Pi and see if everything is going the way that we expect. Okay, the Raspberry Pi is turned on. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and press the first button here and make sure that exactly what is occurring is what we're expecting. So this is button number one here in the end. I'll push this. And sure enough, the light does go on, so that's terrific. It's exactly what we wanted to see happen. Now, the only other thing that I did was I programmed switch number two. The other two I left alone, so let me go ahead and try switch number two. I'll just move over one, and I'll try that one. And it does, in fact, blink. Of course, I would imagine, yeah, sure enough, take my finger off that switch, and the blinking does stop. So that's it. Uh, you've got a pretty straightforward approach to programming on the Pi Face using Java, to uh, mess with your switches and have them interact with your lights. Let me just try one more time. Looks like we're in good shape here and we are in good shape here. So that's about it. I definitely will make sure that I share that code with all of you. I'll include a link in the video descriptions of how you can check out that code. You can download it and modify it and do some extra stuff with it. Uh, but that's about it. I just uh, wanted to thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you back here on the next video when we should have more with the Raspberry Pi. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe because we'll have plenty more coming. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.